Hey guys, Dan Carr here from shuttermuse.com. Today we're taking a look at a brand new pack from Mindshift Gear, and this is called the Photocross Sling. Now for those of you that aren't familiar, Mindshift Gear is the sister company to Think Tank Photo. So they're designed in the same office and they're built in the same factories to the same exacting standards. But Mindshift Gear's packs and photo accessories cater to the outdoor photography market. So we're talking landscape photography, wildlife photography, travel, and adventure sports. Now the Photocross Sling comes in two sizes. There's a Photocross 13 and a 10. A 10 will also hold up to a 10 inch tablet and the 13 will hold up to a 13 inch laptop. Although these are definitely camera bags, not laptop bags, but they do have a slot in the back for those electronic devices. Now I'm actually wearing the Photocross 13 here. This is what we're gonna be taking a look at in this review. So I can give you a bit of a rundown of the sizing and features of this one. What I'm gonna do is just give you a brief look now while I'm wearing it and then I'll take it off, put it on the table and we can have a look at the features in a little bit more detail. But as you can see, the main feature of the bag is that it is a sling. You can sling it around to the front and you can grab your camera gear really quickly without having to take the pack off. So let me open this up. We've got these big waterproof zippers on here, which is a really nice feature for an outdoor photography specific pack. And inside here, uh, in this case, I have a 7D Mark II with a 100 to 400 on it. So this is about the size of a 70 to 200 as well. It's worth noting that this is designed for regular sized DSLR bodies or mirrorless cameras. It's not deep enough to hold a pro body or a regular body with a battery grip on it. So keep that in mind. But with this big lens on here and that camera body, there's still plenty of room for another lens down the bottom here. So in fact, there's enough room in here that we could arrange some dividers and we could stack up at least another couple of small lenses in here. So it's pretty spacious, this 13 one, I think, they're quoting it as being around 11 liters, but it certainly feels like a big 11 liter size. We've got a couple of zippered pockets in the top there for organizing things like batteries, memory card wallets, and that kind of thing. And then in the back here, this little flap will allow you to have your uh, electronic device up to a 13 inch laptop in this particular one. Now, on the front here, we also have this big wide zippered pocket. Again, waterproof zipper, and in here there's an organizer. So you've got some uh, pretty good access here. This is really easy to get things in and out of either that front pocket or this main pocket. Now I think for the rest of the features, it's gonna be easier if I take this pack off, put it on the table here, zoom in, and I'll just walk you through all the fine details. Okay, now we've got the bag here on the table. It's easier for me to show you all of these features. So we'll just start on one side and work our way around. Now, on this side of the pack here, we have a water bottle pocket. So there is no hydration bladder sleeve within this pack. Uh, in this case, they are intending you to use a water bottle. This will fit uh, most one liter Nalgene bottles and things like that. So that's what you can use this side for. Although you can also put the feet of a travel tripod in there if you want to. The bag comes with these two tripod or monopod straps and they're removable from the front points here so you can put one on the side. I've actually tested out using a small travel tripod with the one strap here and the feet in here when I didn't need to carry a water bottle and it worked great as long as you have a small tripod. It doesn't obviously work for the bigger ones but a small um, four or five section travel style tripod will definitely work there. So um, rotating around to the front here, let's just talk a little bit about these front tripod straps. There's some, <clears throat> excuse me, there's some good things and some bad things about this. Um, it's great that they are there and that they're removable. I like that option to take them off. If you don't need a tripod, then that's great to be able to get rid of some of this clutter. Um, what I don't like about them is that the minimum size they can go to is still too big. So basically, you can see here, what I've done is I've actually collapsed this strap to the shortest possible length it can go. But because of the size of these buckles and the stitching area, and then the size of the buckle itself, and the very short distance between the two mounting points, this here is as small as you can make that opening. And actually, with my travel tripod, that's not small enough to give it any kind of grip on the tripod. Um, and with a larger tripod, that's not gonna be such an issue, but you don't really wanna carry around a very big tripod on a bag like this. So I think that uh, this could have been improved if these mounting points here had been further out, and then this same piece of hardware would have actually worked a little bit better. So um, that's probably actually the main issue that I had with this bag, and I think that's one of the reasons that I like putting the tripod on the side. Um, but you know, there's, there's ways around that. You could definitely put some padding around the tripod if you had a really small tripod. Uh, for reference, I'm using the Really Right Stuff TFC 
uh, 14 tripod, which is particularly small. And I, I understand many people don't have a tripod that small. So maybe that's just my issue, but it's worth bearing in mind. Um, the other thing is that you can always just slot one of the legs of the tripod over this buckle. And then it means that even if you can't clamp down on it really tight with this buckle, it's not going to come off and, and go anywhere. It just means it's not really securely fastened to the front and it has a bit of movement in it, but it's not going to fall off. Okay, so spinning around, having a look at the bottom, we have a very, very rugged, um, I'm not sure what material this is, but it's very, very thick, sort of rubberized, um, definitely going to endure a lot of sitting around on a rocky ground. Um, it's going to resist uh, mud and water and things like that really well. So that's great to see. Uh, we also have this little flap here. This is actually just uh, the simplest little thing. It's to protect the zipper, to stop you getting dirt into the zipper there. So if you're putting the bag down on the base, this little flap just stops the mud and the dirt getting in the zipper. So really nice little feature there. Coming around to this side, big handle here, which is great. Um, kind of showed you this already, but we have this big wide opening. Uh, got the waterproof rain cover in here. So if you need to go fully waterproof, that's in there. Little strap here for connecting your memory card wallet or your keys. And then within that, there's two, um, two little Velcro pockets in there for organizing things. And this is a decent size in the front here. So you can definitely get a pretty big hot shoe flash in there or some kind of cable tidying bag, something like that. Get your gloves, get your hat, get some granola bars in there. There's a little bit of storage for that stuff, so that's great. And like I said as well, these nice waterproof zippers. And I really like the styling as well. This orange stands out really well against the black and the gray. Uh, another feature we haven't seen on the Mindshift bags up until this point is these new T-zippers. Um, really easy to hold these when you're wearing gloves, so that's kind of the idea behind that. Just something nice and easy to grab onto. Another handle on the top. Um, now what we're seeing here is a little bit of the harness system. So what I really like about this sling bag versus some other slings that I've tried before is that at the contact points where this bag is gonna be, um, you know, contacting your body the most and, and transferring weight, they've gone for some really wide padded areas. So as opposed to some slings that just have this really thin sort of one or two inch strap, this is super, super wide here where it's going around your waist. And then at the top, you've got the same thing. So this area that goes across your shoulder here really just transfers the load nicely across a large surface area. And that's definitely, I think the best implementation um, of a sling style bag that I've ever used. I think it's better than Think Tank's sling bags and uh, Peak Design's Everyday Sling as well, which I've tried, which I've tested. Uh, that's got really thin straps, and if you really weight it down, then you can feel that digging into you. But this takes the load really, really nicely. Webbing all over here so you can clip things to it. Um, yeah, just a really great design on that. This super fast buckle here, so this is nice and easy to just um, extend that if you need to swing it around your body a little bit easier, and then you just pull on that to tighten it once it's around you. Um, what else have we got on here? A little load tightener on the side. So that's pretty cool. Now hidden in this pocket here, I'm going to pop this out. We have a waist belt. So one part of it comes off and you take this part and this clips on to the opposite side here. So we'll just pop that on like that. And then this side that's in here, this one doesn't detach, but it doesn't need to. It just stays in there. So what you have here is really a load stabilizing belt. It's not supposed to take weight so much like a backpack does where uh, the waist belt is designed for transferring weight to your hips. This is really more of a stabilization belt so the pack doesn't swing around when you don't want it to. So lots of adjustability. And again, I like the clever way that you have of storing it away when you don't need it. Now looking in the main section, uh, like I showed you earlier, two zippered pockets there your electronic device pocket in the back, up to a 13 inch laptop here, or put your iPad or something like that in there. Um, and again, comes with a bunch of dividers. So you have a fairly decent amount of space in there. Um, you know, as far as a sling bag for outdoor photography goes, I think these guys really, really nailed it. Also, the price point is quite surprising. I'm just gonna grab my notes here real quick because uh, when they told me the pricing, um, it was quite interesting. So this Photocross 13, 
and the Photocross 10 will be $114.99. Now at that price point, to get things like this nice waterproof zipper, an included rain cover, um, this really tough, durable material on the bottom, and these nice kind of design features like that, I think that's a really excellent price as well. Um, this, all this design of the harness being super wide and also this nice, um, really kind of see-through mesh here is really lightweight, great for breathability. Uh, so it's a really well-designed and well-thought-out uh, sling pack for outdoor photography. So if you want to travel light landscape photographers that just want to have a couple of those wide-angle lenses and a filter kit, then this is going to be great. I also found that I can actually put my 400mm f4 DO IS2 in here with my 7D Mark II. So this could actually be a great bag for lightweight wildlife photography missions as well, especially with the 100 to 400 that I showed you in there before. So overall, these guys did a really, really great job with these, this new sling series. Like I said, my one uh, main problem was this tripod attachment here wouldn't go quite small enough for what I was looking for. Um, but other than that, no real complaints. I think this is an excellent bag. Okay guys, that was the Mindshift Gear Photocross Sling. I was taking a look at the Photocross 13. It's also available in that smaller Photocross 10 sizing as well. If you want to see tons more photos of this pack, head to the description below this video. There's a link there to the associated blog post where I compare it to other slings, other Mindshift Gear bags, and just generally show you a ton more photos. If you enjoyed this review, give us a thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel. We'll have plenty more like this in the future. Thanks for watching.